Hello everyone, this is Strawberry Shorty back with Locker of Death. And we have just had a ghost encounter with what I believe to be the good ghost. And I think we're starting chapter 10? My ninja girlfriend. Yep, chapter 10. We all freeze at the sight of the ghost. Oh no, she's between us and the door, so the only place to run is deeper into the house. Even if there's a back door, I don't know if Rui can last that long in here. <sighs> what? what do you want? <sighs> Without a word, the ghost fades from sight. Huh? She just left? Look, something's there. On the floor below us, where the ghost had hovered, sits an old tattered notebook. I cautiously walk forward and pick it up. I knew she was the good one. Did the ghost drop this? Come on, we can talk about what happened once we're out of here. Right, let's go. Outside, the village is as quiet and peaceful as ever. The things that happen inside the house almost feel like a dream already. Look at this music. I take a closer look at the notebook. No, there's nothing written on it. What? This is a diary? Karina's name is in it. This is Karina's diary. I still think that was Karina. That's my theory. Volume is still all over the place. It might be the clue we're looking for. I don't know. Don't you think it's a little suspicious that the ghost would drop a clue to help us break the curse? Why would she do that? What should I say? Maybe she wants to find rest. It could be a trick. I say maybe she wants to find rest. I still think it's a twin. She sure hasn't been acting like it. No, she already has a point. Karina might not be as actively malevolent as she seems. It's possible she wants to move on, but can't break away from the tragedy that binds her to this world. So then the diary will tell us what needs to be done? That's my hope. It would explain why she just disappeared like that, too. Maybe she didn't come to attack us at all, but specifically wanted to give us her diary. At least our investigation wasn't a total failure. Now that she's outside the house, she's starting to sound strong and confident again. Can we read the diary? Whatever the negative energies inside did to her, the effects are fading. It's getting late, though. Why don't we go to the inn? Do we have enough time for that? Shouldn't we keep investigating? We still have tomorrow. For now, we should look through the diary and then get some rest so we aren't trying to investigate while exhausted. Okay, if you're sure. There's enough time for us to break the curse. There has to be. Isn't it like two days? Soon to be one day? We have two rooms at the end. One for the girls to share together and a separate room for me. I got a room all to myself? First, however, we gather together to look over Karina's totally blank diary. Looks like she wrote a diary entry every day after dinner. Yep, talking about her daily life. These all sound normal enough, though. She writes about what she was learning at school, little arguments with her sister, playing tag in the park with her mother while her sister played with a doll. Nothing that would be out of place for any girl her age. Dolls are always suspicious. We saw that doll in the picture. Look at this line here. It mentions her mother singing a lullaby about a wandering maiden every night before they went to sleep. Do you think? Yeah, I bet that's the song she sang to the victims. Odd choice. Twisting a childhood lullaby into a farewell song to your victims. How horrible. That would be another reason why Kana is the ghost. Because Kana was killed by her mother. Maybe the mom sang that while she was murdering her. As we read through the diary, the entries start to take on a darker note. Karina writes about being teased at school and then bullied, both emotionally and physically, with the described incidents getting worse and worse. This music really does not fit this dramatic diary entry thing. Some of these entries talk about betrayal, too. At least one of the bullies was someone she thought she could trust. That must have been really rough. I'm relating really hard to Karina right now. No wonder her spirit is so angry. The things those other kids did to her were horrible. Why didn't anyone stop them? Because nobody cares. Cases of bullying often go unchecked. It's an unfortunate reality. Too true, Rui. Too true. What should I say? The teacher should have done something. Do things like this happen at our school? So the teacher should have done something. Do jobs. The teacher should have done something. Such as? Punish the kids who were hurting her. Sometimes that only makes the bullying worse. Besides, she wrote here that they felt she was exaggerating. I know how bad bullying in school can get, and you'd be surprised how little of it is an exaggeration. <laughs> and while I do agree that, you know, getting a teacher involved can make the bullying worse, I don't think ignoring it's the right thing either. Some of these kids get so out of control and so violent and cruel that I don't even know how you'd punish it. Like, if you suspend them, they don't care. Ugh, that's not fair. I think anti-bullying policies are better now than they used to be. Remember, this happened 20 years ago. 
Yeah, I know. As we get near the end of the diary, the entries shift their focus again. Although Karina still mentions the bullying, now she's more concerned about the stalker following her around. She writes about seeing him on her way to school in the mornings and again on her way home, always watching from the same spot. Uh, it says she told the teachers about the man and they thought she was making things up. Real wonderful school we get going on here. His heavenly host elementary. Must have been a pretty nasty shock for them when he killed her, huh? I hope they learn from that incident and take these sort of things more seriously from now on. Karina must have been so scared near the end. It's apparent even from the way she wrote these entries that she thought something terrible would happen to her. We still got the cheery music going on in the background. She writes about feeling alone and abandoned. Tomorrow we should investigate the school. Not only was she bullied there, but the stalker also watched her from nearby. If the school is important, the school is important, that might explain why the curse uses a school locker. Good thinking. You mean we're actually on the right track? Oh, I hope so. Let's all try to get sleep so we're well rested for tomorrow. Alone in my room, I look at Karina's diary. Now we have the more serious music. The pain and horror of what she went through is clear, but I still don't understand why her spirit would be so set on hurting people. I would be wanting to hurt people in her position. Also, Kana's. I still think Kana's a ghost. I wish they'd show us the actual entries, though. Her ghost gave us this diary, too. Is she asking us for help? Is there something we're missing? I read through the last few entries again. There, her despair begins to rise to the surface as she realizes she's in danger and no one is going to help her. That's when you buy a gun. Or start walking to school with a bat. And she was right. Her stalker killed her. We don't know that he killed her. With a shudder, I stare at the final frightened entry as though I might reach back into the past and change Karina's fate. But there's nothing I can do. That was the last time she ever wrote. Huh? I take a closer look. Wait a minute. The next page is stuck to this one. Although the remaining entries are blank, it's possible there's one more entry after the one we thought was the last. What should I do? Check the final page or don't worry. What do you mean? Check the final page, obviously. This is too important to ignore. Maybe it'll just be blank. But if she actually wrote another entry, it might contain something that could help us. Maybe it'll be from her sister. Careful not to tear the pages. I work my fingernail into the gap and gently ease the two stuck pages apart. At last, they separate completely and I flip to the new page. I was right. There isn't a lot written there, but it's still Karina's true final diary entry. I glanced towards the door and hesitated. Should I get the others? No, they might already be sleeping. Besides, I don't even know what it says yet. If it's important, I can tell them about it in the morning. With that decided, I began to read. Are they actually going to I hope they actually read to us. Karina starts out this entry with another paragraph about her fears over the stalker, whom she felt had tried to follow her home the previous day. She talks again about how the teachers won't listen, but now she seems to understand why. She writes about how her bullies have convinced the teachers that she just makes up stories for attention. Oh, poor, poor Karina. Since there are so many of them, the teachers accepted their story as the truth. This also happened to me. So many times. Teachers, uh, teachers aren't smart. They don't realize it. They don't realize that the bullies work together. That's not right. How could they do that? I would haunt all of these people. I keep reading, my stomach twisting with anxiety as I read Karina's agonized, despair-filled diary entry. She writes about how she can't even ask her mother for help because Kana makes sure to distract her mother whenever she tries. I would kind of do that. What? I shout out loud, unable to keep my surprise to myself. Kana was her sister, wasn't she? Her sister, according to Karina's diary, is worse than the other bullies. The others who just don't take her seriously and think it's funny to see how scared she is, but Kana does believe her. Kana wants the stalker to succeed. No way. I read through the rest of the entry and then flipped back to the start of the diary. Rereading the accounts of her daily life with this new context, I see the things we missed before, little hints of resentment between the sisters. Slowly, I start to piece it together. Although they were twins, it seems Kana thought their mother loved Karina more than her, and she was jealous of her because of it. Little comments that sounded innocuous on a first read-through now jump out at me. And the bullies. The one Karina felt so betrayed by. She never named the bully, but now it's apparent she meant Kana. I would put Kana's name in that diary. It's like I'm taking you down with me when this gets read. Kana was one of the bullies tormenting her at school while feeding innocence at home. That must be why the teachers were so ready to accept the bully's word over Karina, since her sister was saying the same thing. They probably thought they couldn't trust a family that they could trust a family member to tell the truth. She thought Kana wanted her dead too. Of course, we know how things ended up. With a chill, I wonder if Kana was actually right about their mother's favoritism. After all, their mother killed Kana and herself in response to Karina's death. Did she just snap from the strain, or was it because her favorite daughter was the one she lost? 
And now that I know Kana felt this way, too many entries seem to describe Karina playing with her mother while Kana played alone. Everything about this story is so awful. Was Karina the only innocent one involved? But then why would you start doing such awful things, Karina? Why would you lash out at everyone in death? Yes, it's baffling, isn't it? At the same time, however, it starts to make more sense. She must have felt like the whole world was against her, everyone conspiring together to enable her death. When she died, maybe all that rage and anger couldn't be contained any longer. I'm getting all the more certain that Karina's the good ghost. I rub my head and put the diary aside. The last entry doesn't shed any more light on the death or the nature of the curse, so we'll still need to investigate the school tomorrow. Wait, what if Kana is the one who actually killed her? None of us ever questioned the official explanation of for her death. Because of the stalker, everyone assumes it was him, but they have no proof. They never even found the body. There might not even have, have been a real stalker. Like, it could have just been one of the bullies. I mean, that would still kind of be a real stalker, but like, like they put someone up to it. It's so messed up to try and scare someone that way. If Karina escaped him or even managed to fight back, would Kana have taken matters into her own hands? Did she hate Karina that much? The more I think about it, the more I'm sure learning the full truth of Karina's death is critical to breaking the curse. Something made her ghost cling to this world instead of moving on, and her unsolved murder is at the center of it. We need to find her body, if possible, and we need to be certain about what really happened. Her body's probably shoved in a locker somewhere. <laughs> We're buried in the school basement. That's another popular one. Will the school really contain a clue? I sure hope so. I set the diary aside, but I feel a strange kinship with Karina after reading her final entries. Me with my two wonderful friends and my budding third friendship. She felt her death creeping up on her, just like people affected by the curse, or running out of time, just like she was. I'm not running out of time. Nadoka and Mon aren't running out of time. Please, Karina, if you can hear me, stop this. Hurting us won't change anything, please. Beg into the wrong ghost. For a moment, I could swear I feel a slight chill in the air, but nothing happens. Still, I can't help but address her again. I'll help you find peace, Karina, I promise. I turn up the light and get into bed, but I can't sleep. Everything we saw and learned flashes through my mind, although with the knowledge that we're almost out of time. Mana put my name in the locker a day ahead of Nadoka. How will the curse count that? We might have one extra day if the curse counts the time based on Nadoka instead. Either way, it's so little time. We have to break the curse in time to save them. We have to. A quiet knock pulls me from my thoughts. Yes? It's Nadoka. Can I come in? Of course. I get out of bed and open the door. I sure hope I didn't wake you up. Nah, I couldn't sleep anyway. There's something I want to tell you. Mind if I sit down? Not at all. We sit on the bed together and Adoka relaxes against me before letting out a long sigh. Why don't we sit in those two chairs? It finally clicked with me, you know. Mana and I are the ones in danger, not you. Wow, took you long enough. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. We're the ones who put your name in the locker. Mana doesn't know. I never told her you put my name in too. I keep going back and forth on whether or not I should tell her the truth. Yeah. How, how do you feel? A little scared, I guess. I never thought death would be waiting for me like this, but that's not what I wanted to talk about. She shifts against me and looks into my eyes. Even though I'm afraid, even though the curse has caused all this trouble for us, it doesn't change my feelings for you at all. I love you, Shorty, I really do. Her words hang in the air between us and I'm suddenly aware of how close she is. Her face is inches away from mine, her lips still parted with the whispered from the whispered confession. What should I do? Kiss Nadoka or move away? Ugh, I don't want to commit to any of these girls yet. So I'm going to move away, not until the curse is broken. I move away to put a more respectable amount of distance between us again. Nadoka clears her throat and looks away awkwardly. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I'll let you get back to sleep now. You should try to sleep too. We need to be at our best tomorrow. Yeah. Don't worry, we can do this. We'll break the curse. For everyone's sake, we have to. Thanks. See you in the morning, shorty. Then she hurries out of the room. I think the way it works is that the final chapter has, like, four endings. One for each girl and, like, a, a just a stay friends one. I'm not sure, but either way, I'm not going to kiss Nadoka without the intent to romance her. Alone again, it isn't long before I finally drift away into sleep. I wake up suddenly during the night. That's a concerning noise. My chest hurts with a strange sense of pressure, as if a massive weight is pressing down upon me. It's difficult to breathe. I open my eyes. I think I think this is the good one. She looks slightly less angry. <sighs> and find myself staring straight at the ghost as darkness creeps in around the edges of my vision. I like this music. I wonder if it's uploaded somewhere. It probably isn't, which makes me want to, like, record it.
keep trying to like get a, a solid recording of it, but a dog is barking outside. Ugh. I really hope this is uploaded somewhere. Sorry for the random bout of silence. She's trying to kill me. What can I do? How can I fight a ghost? Will I be able to escape her deadly grasp in time? We know where this is going. Find out in the next chapter! So, the plot thickens. Have you been bullied in the past? Do you think the good ghost is Karina or Kana? Do you think Kana killed Karina? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!